This is a land of hills and valleys, which the Lord our God cares for. This is the land he will send the gentle rain from heaven onto, and his eyes watch over it all year through. My name is John Paul Kifasi. I'm the executive director, Irene Gleason Foundation in Uganda. My name is Trent Van Mayor, and I'm the development manager here at the Irene Gleason Foundation. Hi, I'm Nero Christopher from Kitigum, Uganda. My name is Lake Winifred. My name is Dennis Olan. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. <laughs> The Irene Gleason Foundation was started in 1991. Um, Northern Uganda had been going through a period of 20 years of war, and uh, God spoke in the heart of an Australian grandmother called Irene Gleason. She felt the call of the Lord on her to come and rescue the children of Northern Uganda, and her vision was to come and build these children to achieve their full potential came to the poorest part of northern Uganda, 60 kilometers from the border of Sudan, where war was raging, thousands of children were being abducted, forced to become sex slaves and child soldiers, and being killed you know, right here in the war. She started with 50 kids. Over a period of 20 years, God has blessed our work, and we've had over 25,000 children go through this ministry. I came to live in IDF when I was just nine years old but now I'm 20 years old. So Mama Irene was taking care of me since then, up to now. Came to IGF, joined the school in junior level. I finished three years course in junior. I finished two years in craft. I, I, I had five years of school. IGF has been supporting me. So I started very well. Now I have ideas and knowledge and skill to build a house and many things. We know that you know there needs to be leaders who receive a high level of education, but we know that the vast majority of people here in an emerging economy need to have more practical skills. And so that's why it's so important that we have our vocational school um, where students are able to receive practical training, um, where they can create incomes for themselves and be job creators instead of um, just employees. They can build buildings and lay bricks and mix cement, and they can, uh, they're carpenters, they can make desks and tables and chairs and cabinets. Uh, the, for the young women, uh, we have the tailoring and garment cutting school where people can create their own clothes. Clothes are always in fashion and they never are, go out, and so people can always look there to create income. Before I came to IGF, I was having my parents at home, and I loved them so much, especially my mother. So I lost my mother before I came to IGF. Up to now, I'm still mourning for her. Yeah, because I love her so much. And then Mama Irene was also taking care of me. But then last year, she also passed away. And last year I lost hope, really. I wasn't thinking that I would be going back to school. But now God has changed things in IGF. Those one who, has, who have taken the power now, they took me back to school and I'm continuing with my study. But life is not the same of the other one, which I was having, my, my parents. Now I'm living alone with our young children. My story is so interesting, <clears throat> though it has been hard, very tough situation and uh, condition in life. And now life is full of hills and valley. I passed through many things that I was regretting why I was born. I never knew that I would meet all those challenges. But I thank God that though I went through, I was so discouraged 
that what is life about now? Why? Why am I alive? Why could this, could this thing happen on me? What have I done? I walk, we walk, we walk, till we reach a point that I was unable to move no more. I say, this is the area now I'm going to decide my life, either to be killed or to continue, and we reach where we are going to reach the following day. In the morning, I was called because they sent the, the report to the commander that someone was uh, trying to escape in the, uh, during the night. And I say, wow, I'm going to be killed now. I started you know, warming myself that if anything comes, let it come now. There's no way. Only I believe God is going to stand for me because I did not apply for this thing to come and suffer here. So I had to wait for, and uh, they started caning me. Seriously, 150 strokes. They just came me to that level. I was so discouraged, started hurting myself, started you now stopping the mindset of coming back home because I will be killed anytime. So, why should I bother to be killed for nothing? <laughs> I'm a radio presenter at Mighty Fire FM. I'm a youth pastor at Community Church. And I do music recording. And at the background is my recording studio. And I do some computer skill training with some few youth. At JVC, every day feeding the Christian people, or feeding children with the word of God, transforming the mindset of kind things, and making them to believe God, trust in God, believe it that God is with them. This organization is doing a lot in northern Uganda, especially in the district called Kitgum. So this organization has built a good hospital, which is helping those ones who are affected with the HIV. Iron Glition uh, Foundation does quite numbers of things. Um, they take care of orphans, uh, we have the hospice, that's for, uh, for the AIDS victim. Uh, they offer counseling, uh, education, technical, that education includes primary education, technical education, and business studies education. Right now, as I talk, uh, Iron Glacian Foundation is busy drilling numbers of boreholes in the villages, in, um, yeah, in the villages in other districts. So, Iron Glacian is is like the mother NGO in northern Uganda here. The Irene Gleason Foundation has two main programs, its education program and its health program. The education program consists of formal education, which includes four primary schools serving 5,000 children daily, and one vocational school, which serves 1,000 children daily. At all of these schools, children receive daily food, medication, and education. We also have our community education program, which consists of Mighty Fire FM radio station, which has over a million listeners each day. Mighty Fire FM presents radio talk shows and community debates for the development of communities around northern Uganda. We also have our external education program where we sponsor our best students on for further study in secondary school and university training. Uh, we have a mentorship program for young people, discipleship program, we have a church, a radio station. It's a very holistic ministry that covers every aspect of life of a human being, but our mission is to improve the quality of lives of children in northern Uganda who have lived through war. Hello Australia, as you can see I'm busy as ever, always busy, busy. <laughs> I also am recovering from malaria, you can see I've lost a little bit of weight, otherwise everything's good, God's good. 
I'm going to start a play group any minute with a whole bunch of mums and their babies and we'll get them all converted and that's good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. See you later. Back to my work. Goodbye, Irene. <laughs>